The best dog fence for your greyhounds. Is your grey safe? One gust of wind in your fence can go from your greyhound's greatest protection to your worst nightmare. But we're going to make sure that never happens to your big guy, so stick around for fencing tips that work. Hey, I have lots more videos to come about better living with your pet greyhound, so while you're listening, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications with a tap of the bell. I ran across this article full of great advice on fencing your yard to keep your greyhound safe. It's called The Good Fence is the Best Defense by Patricia Gale Burnham. And here's some of what she had to say. When I moved to my present house 10 years ago, it had a new cedar fence on the north, an old redwood fence on the south, and the front and back were open. I fenced in the two open sides and have since faced a decade of maintenance. Redwood resists the insects and rot that can cause wood to decompose, but it gets wet too often, and it'll rot in three to five years. When I had to replace the same posts again, I switched to pressure-treated posts that contain toxic substances to repel pests and prevent rot. I use the posts everywhere except puppy yards and small exercise yards where they're likely to be chewed. When I helped a friend fence her yard, we installed only pressure-treated posts. We put the boards on the inside to prevent the dogs from reaching the fence posts or rails. While I understand the practicality of this, anytime you install a fence, you want to make sure that this is legal and okay with whoever owns the property on the other side of that fence. Often, facing the pretty side of your new fence to your property rather than your neighbor's violates local building codes, and it's kind of a shabby thing to do to your neighbor, too. You can create a barrier between the pressure-treated posts and your dogs just by putting in some low-maintenance plants. If you don't want to plant around the whole fence line, just plant around those posts. Hostas are great for this. They grow fast, they're very dog-proof and kid-proof, and they also keep your dog from piddling on the fence, which is going to weaken those posts no matter what they're made out of. Well, back to the article. Building a new fence is easier than replacing rotting posts of an old one because then you don't have to remove the old posts. The more concrete that's been poured around those posts when they were installed, the harder they are to remove. Now, if appearance isn't important, an easy way to add years of life to your fence is to cripple each rotten post by setting a new, preferably pressure-treated post, just behind the rotted one and nailing 2x4 strips to connect the old post to the new. I crippled all the posts on my old fence and am starting on the fence I put in 10 years ago. Storms and high winds can put a final strain on a rotted post and cause it to fail, so repairs are needed after stormy weather. I was feeling sorry for myself setting posts during a storm in 1992, but finally finished. The fence had been built with the cheapest materials, which makes it harder to repair. Neighbors who own the fence report storm damage to me, knowing that I'll repair it because I have more to lose if my dogs get out. It's a tough way to lose your dog, which motivates me to do fence patrol after and even during a storm. I just wanted to interject that I can attest to this personally. Luckily, the time Peaches got out, she just took herself on a regular walk, and we found her down the street sniffing around the schoolyard. After that, we learned real fast to check our fence, not only after a storm, but also any time we had a windy day. Additionally, we'd go out and check the fence and both gates every single morning because we couldn't see them from the house. And as Murphy's Law would have it, this always seemed to be where we had the most fence damage, too, for some reason. Ms. Burnham continues, My neighborhood has a lot of geriatric wood fences. Every time there's a big storm, many fences are blown down and their owners act surprised. Well, they shouldn't be. Fences blow down because the supporting posts have rotted at ground level where you'd never notice until the damage is done. By walking along the fence and pushing against each post, you can tell if a post is in an advanced state of rot. You see, pushing against a solid post is like pushing against a wall. Nothing moves it. But if you push against a rotted post, the fence gives and flexes. That post must be crippled or removed and replaced. A fence won't blow down until a series of posts has rotted through. Since they don't all rot at the same time, it's critical for the safety of your greyhound to keep up with these inspections and repairs. My office understands that after a windstorm, if my fences need repair, I won't be at work until it's finished. In order to know if repairs are needed, I must walk along the entire fence line and push on each post to test its soundness. If the weather's bad and I resist the idea, I just remember friends who've tragically lost dogs this way, and that motivates me. This February storms blew down many fences. I found a well-cared-for Australian shepherd looking for a ride home. She had no ID and didn't seem to be used to being on her own. I brought her to Animal Control, where her owner reclaimed her a few days later. Between the floods and the damaged fences that month, Animal Control was filled with lost dogs. Go out and check your fence today. 
Now, some of you are probably wondering, what about an electric fence? Seasoned greyhound owners, I can hear you chuckling out there, or maybe gasping. The fact is, electric fences have a reputation for being impractical for greyhounds because they would just blow right through it without a second thought. I recalled hearing recently, though, about a new type of electric fence, so I poked around a little and found the answer on Reddit. I'll just quote this directly instead of trying to sum it up, because the comments were just gold. The original question was, Electric fences, hear me out. My family's five-year-old Boxer Labrador mix recently had to be put down for medical reasons. We since decided that we wanted a greyhound as our next dog. We still have an electric fence that our old dog used. I was wondering if this specific type of electric fence would work for a greyhound. Instead of it being an actual wire that gets put in the ground, it has this radius around the house. If a dog goes past the radius, they'll get shocked, and they keep getting shocked until they come back. Stop laughing. I've heard that the type of electric fence that most people use, where it just shocks them if they cross the line, does not work for greyhounds because they can jump right over. Would this type of electric fence that we have work? Thank you so much for any help. And the first response is, at conservatively 30 miles an hour, being propelled even further by unexpected shocks, a greyhound will probably be unable to reason that it should return to the perimeter. Knowing that this is a possibility that your greyhound could wind up lost, alone, and receiving constant shocks, I have no idea why anyone would employ such a system. Agreed. Greyhounds are not smart when it comes to these things, or more like they go into full-flight mode when anything startles them. They wouldn't be likely to put two and two together that they need to go back into the area to make the shocking stop. They're also wimps and overthinkers. If they touched the perimeter and it shocked them, they'd be the type that would never want to go outside again because they wouldn't understand what happened to them and why. Not worth it at all, if you ask me. This one says, yes, they respond really poorly to punishment and negative reinforcement. I can't see this working. Here's another answer. There are literally thousands of greyhound pet parents that have had to get a real fence because their dog simply ran right through their electric fence. Do yourself a favor and get a real fence. And the last one says, probably not. If the dog can power through pain and annoyance, it'll be useless. Greyhounds have an instinct to sprint, and at their speeds, it won't take them long to get out of the effective area of your electric fence. Well, I sure hope you've never suffered the heartbreak of losing your dog this way. Many of you greyhound pros out there probably know all about keeping a fence in good shape. If you have any constructive ideas for our fans who are new greyhound owners on the subject of fencing, please take a moment now to share your story in the comments. Your knowledge might save a greyhound's life. Hey, why don't you stick around and make yourself at home? Click here for another great greyhound flick and let's spend a little more time together. Thank you for watching. See you over on the next video on the Greyhound Home Care channel. Thank you.